Hello everyone, welcome to Exademy. My name is Prabhas Kumar and I am teaching you Engineering Mathematics. We are in the first chapter of Engineering Mathematics which is Basic Concepts and we have entered into lesson number 7 which is Analytic Geometry. So in Analytic Geometry, what all things we have to study? We have to study these 8 topics. First one is 2 dimensional coordinate system. Second is straight line, circle, conic sections, parabola, ellipse, hyperbola and planes in 3 dimensions. Okay. So we will be studying this first uh, 2 dimensional coordinate system. So let's get started. So 2 dimensional coordinate system, the first topic that we have to study is distance between the 2 points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Say so suppose you have 2 points given whose coordinates are x1, y1 and x2, y2 and you are asked to find what is the distance between those 2 points. So for finding the distance between the 2 points, you need to simply apply this formula that is d equals to root under of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Okay. So just see an example here. So two Two points as you can see. So first point is 2,4, second point is 3,7. So what is the distance between this? D equals to root under 3 minus 2 whole square plus 7 minus 4 whole square. Okay, so this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2. Simply need to substitute here, you'll get this value that is d equals to root under 10. Fine. Moving to next. We have the point of division of a line joining x1, y1 and x2, y2 in the ratio m is to 1, m is to n. So suppose two uh, line is there and the distance between the two points that is on the extreme ends, the coordinates are given are x1, y1 and x2, y2. Okay, And this line has been divided into two separate zones with a point, this red color point that you can see is uh, this point. This point is dividing this line in the ratio m is to n. Okay, now if you are asked what is this point, how will you calculate this? Simply apply this formula that is mx2 plus nx1 upon m plus n comma my2 plus ny1 upon m plus n. Okay, so very easy to remember this formula. So what you have to do in the denominator, simply add the sum of these ratios that is m plus n. And in the numerator, what you have to do? You have to do the cross multiply. Suppose if you want to find this uh, x value on the numerator, so this will be m into x2 plus n into x1. Fine. Now for finding this y value, you need to do the same thing. That is m into y2 plus n into y1. Very simple. Now see an example here. Suppose this is a line, straight line given to you. The two extreme end coordinates are 2,4 and 2,6. All right. And this has been divided into two separate zones. That is 1 is to 3. Now you are asked to calculate what is the uh, coordinate value for this particular red point on this maroon line. So how will you find this coordinate point? Simply substitute all these values in this formula. So you will get 1 into 2 plus 3 into 2 upon 1 plus 3 comma 1, com 1 is to uh, sorry 1 into 6 plus 3 into 4 divided by 1 plus 3. If you solve this you will get the value 2 comma 4.5. Okay. So I will uh, suggest you kindly solve by your own and type the answer in the comment box and verify your answer with my answer. Fine. So moving to next point we have. So in the third point we will be seeing how to calculate the midpoint of the line joining x1, y1 and x2, y2. This is a straight line. Two endpoints are given to you. That is x1, y1, x2, y2. Alright. Now you are asked to calculate what is the midpoint of this particular line. So very simple. For finding the midpoint what you need, what you need to do is simply take the average. That is x1 plus x2 upon 2 comma y1 plus y2 upon 2. Now. Uh, can you tell me which type of mean is this? I had taught in the previous video there are three types of mean. So please comment in the comment box which type of mean is this? Whether it's arithmetic mean, geometric mean or harmonic mean. I will see in your comment and in the next video if, uh, your, if you have given a correct answer I will take your name as well. So let's see example in this example what, uh, uh, what we have here. So this is a straight line. The two different points are there 1 comma 4, 8 comma 9 and the midpoint is uh, this point. Okay. So you are asked to calculate what is the midpoint for this particular straight line. It's very simple. So 1 plus 8 upon 2 comma 4 plus 9 upon 2. So if you solve this you will get 4.5 comma 6.5. So this is the midpoint of the line joining this Fine. Moving to next. 
Suppose three coordinate points are given to you. That is x1, y1, x2, y2 and x3, y3. Alright. Now these are the coordinate points for a particular triangle. Now you are asked to calculate what is the area for this particular triangle. For, for calculating the area of this particular triangle, what you need to do is area equals to plus minus half of determinant of x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3, 1. So why I have written plus minus is because you know very well that area can never be negative. It, this always has to be positive. So this is there is another way of writing this that you can take the total modulus that you apply a big modulus on all the sides or you simply use plus minus sign fine just in order to uh, get away from the negative values whenever you get some negative value you simply uh, multiply or with minus one so you'll get the positive value just see an example here so this we have a one triangle here the three coordinate points are given that is 1 comma 2 4 comma 7 and 9 comma 12 now simply for uh, substitute all these coordinate values in this particular formula you'll get the area the by solving this determinant you'll get the value of this determinant as minus 10 and uh, as, as I told you this value can never be negative so in order to make it positive multiply the negative sign so you'll get plus 10 all right now solve by your own the value of this determinant and type in the comment box. So there are certain note points that we need to keep in mind. So first note point is that area can never be negative. Okay. So hence always use mod value. So area can never be negative my dear. So you need to always use the modulus value and you need to take only the magnitude of that. Forget about the negative sign. Now if area is 0, so this means that all the three points are collinear. Now see here, now suppose three points are given to you, okay. Now if you find the area and by suppose you got the value of this area as 0. So it means that it will not form a triangle, rather it will become a straight line and on that straight line all these three coordinate points will lie. Clear? Moving to next, we have to find what is the distance between the two points in the polar coordinate system. You know very well there are different types of coordinate systems. You might be aware of uh, Cartesian coordinate system, cylindrical polar, uh, polar coordinate system or spherical polar coordinate system. All right. So right now we are not discussing about the cylindrical and the spherical. Just sim uh, simply we are discussing polar. So in this polar, the, uh, the coordinate system, the uh, data is given in the form of r and theta. All right. Now so suppose this this is a straight line and the two extreme ends are given the coordinates are r1 theta1 r2 theta2 now you are interested to calculate what is the distance between these two points the for finding the distance between these two coordinate points or this distance of this line is d equals to root under of r1 square plus r2 square minus 2 r1 r2 cos theta2 minus theta1 so a very simple logical formula okay see an example here so two coordinate points we have 2 comma 30 degree 4 comma 60 degree for finding the dim uh, distance between these two points d equals to root under of 2 square plus 4 square minus 2 into 2 into 4 cos 60 minus 30. When you solve this, you will get the value as 2.478. Once again, I am telling please verify the, all these values and type in the comment box such that you will get a good confidence whether I have solved this correctly or whether you have solved this correctly or let's both of us have solved this correctly or not. Okay, so this was the fifth point. Now moving to the next point that we have the equa equations of transformation. Sometimes it happens that we are uh, asked to or we need some transformations uh, from either from Cartesian system to polar or from polar to Cartesian. Okay. So very simple logical uh, relation is that. So for converting this Cartesian, what is Cartesian? The data will be given in the terms of x and y and in for polar the data will be given in the terms of r and theta. Okay. So for converting this x and y to r and theta you simply apply this formula that is r equals to root under of x square plus y square and theta will be equal to tan inverse of y upon x. Similarly, for converting polar to Cartesian, uh, x will be equal to r cos theta and y will be equal to r sin theta. With this, we have learned how to convert uh, the uh, from Cartesian to polar and from polar to Cartesian. So one thing I would like to say that uh, you might be feeling that these things are very simple and why I, am, why I am teaching all these things in engineering mathematics because my dear I am covering almost all of the students and there are different levels of the students alright. Now I am I'm trying to convert uh, means I am trying to make the things very easy. So when I will be entering into the very tough topics, I will try to make it very simpler and I assure you I will make the most complicated topics very simple one. Fine. So uh, beware, have patience and uh, see you in the next lecture. Till then take care. Bye-bye.